Recent archaeological finds in Asia are challenging ideas about the evolution of modern humans and our closest relatives, and rewriting the book on human origins. In 1929, a nearly complete skull of Homo erectus pecanensis was discovered in a cave in southwest Peking, as the Chinese capital was then known. Peking man became a household name as the earliest human subspecies discovered in China. The 500,000-year-old skull was among the earliest human remains ever uncovered, and it helped to convince some researchers that humanity first evolved in Asia. The Peking Man fossils are a set of 200 Homo erectus fossils excavated during the 1920s and 1930s. During World War II, Chinese authorities packed up the fossils to send them to the United States for safekeeping. The bones were supposed to be transported to a U.S. Marine base and then shipped off. Instead, the fossils vanished, and no one really knows what happened to them. A new investigation suggests that the bones may be buried beneath a parking lot, but they have still not been located as of this date. The importance of Peking Man has faded over the years. Although modern dating methods date the fossil even earlier, at up to 780,000 years old, the specimen has been eclipsed by discoveries in Africa that have yielded much older remains of ancient human relatives. Such finds have cemented Africa's status as the cradle of humanity, the place from which modern humans and their predecessors spread around the globe, and relegated Asia to an evolutionary dead end. But the tale of a Peking man has haunted generations of researchers, who have struggled to understand its relationship to modern humans. They wonder whether the descendants of a Peking man, and fellow members of the species Homo erectus, died out or evolved into a more modern species. Now paleoanthropologists across the globe are starting to pay more attention to Asian fossils and how they relate to other early hominins. Archaeological finds in Asia have made it clear that an amazing variety of archaic human species once roamed the continent, and they are challenging conventional ideas about the evolutionary history of humanity. Many scientists tend to see Asian fossils and artifacts through the prism of what was happening in Africa and Europe. Those other continents have historically drawn more attention in studies of human evolution because of the antiquity of fossil finds there. But it's increasingly clear that many Asian fossil material cannot fit into the traditional narrative of human evolution. In its typical form, the story of Homo sapiens starts in Africa. The exact details vary from one theory to another, but the key characters and events generally remain the same. In the standard view of human evolution, Homo erectus first evolved in Africa more than 2 million years ago. Then, some time before 600,000 years ago, it gave rise to a new species, Homo heidelbergensis, the oldest remains of which have been found in Ethiopia. About 400,000 years ago, some members of Homo heidelbergensis left Africa and split into two branches. One ventured into the Middle East and Europe, where it evolved into Neanderthals, the other went east, where members became Denisovans. The remaining population of Homo heidelbergensis, in Africa, eventually evolved into our own species, Homo sapiens, about 200,000 years ago. Then these early modern humans expanded their range to Eurasia 60,000 years ago, where they replaced Neanderthals, Denisovans and other hominids. A hallmark of Homo heidelbergensis, the potential common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans, is that individuals have a mixture of primitive and modern features. Like more archaic lineages, Homo heidelbergensis has a massive brow ridge and no chin. But it also resembles Homo sapiens, with its smaller teeth and bigger brain case. Most researchers have viewed Homo heidelbergensis as a transitional form between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Unfortunately, fossil evidence from this period, the dawn of the human race, is scarce and often ambiguous. It is the least understood episode in human evolution. But it's central to our understanding of humanity's ultimate origin. The tale is further muddled by Asian fossils analyzed over the past four decades, which cast doubt over the linear progression from African Homo erectus to modern humans. They show that, between roughly 900,000 and 125,000 years ago, East Asia was teeming with hominins, endowed with features that would place them somewhere between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Those fossils are a big mystery. 
They clearly represent more advanced species than Homo erectus, but nobody knows what they are, because they don't seem to fit into any categories. The fossil's transitional characteristics have prompted researchers to lump them with Homo heidelbergensis. Because the oldest of these forms, two skulls uncovered in East Asia, date back 900,000 years, suggestions have been made that Homo heidelbergensis may have originated in Asia, and then spread to other continents. But many researchers contend that the materials from Asia are different from European and African Homo heidelbergensis fossils, despite some apparent similarities. One nearly complete skull, dated to 250,000 years ago, has a bigger brain case, a shorter face and a lower cheekbone than most Homo heidelbergensis specimens, suggesting that the species was more advanced. If you find this video to be compelling, please click the subscribe button, share the video, destroy the like button, and leave a comment. This really helps the algorithm push the video out to a much larger audience. Thank you. Such transitional forms persisted for hundreds of thousands of years in Asia, until species appeared with such modern traits that some researchers have classified them as Homo sapiens. One of the most recent is represented by two teeth and a lower jaw bone, dating to about 100,000 years ago. The jaw has a classic modern human appearance, but retains some archaic features of Peking man, such as a more robust build and a less protruding chin. Some paleontologists think that the transitional fossils are evidence that Peking man was an ancestor of modern Asian people. In this model, known as multiregionalism, archaic humans, descended from Asian Homo erectus, interbred with incoming groups of Homo sapiens from Africa, and their progeny gave rise to the ancestors of modern East Asians. Support for this idea also comes from tools and other artifacts. In Europe and Africa, Stone tools changed markedly over time, but hominins in Asia used the same type of simple stone instruments from about 1.7 million years ago to 10,000 years ago. This suggests that local hominins evolved continuously, with little influence from outside populations. But the continuity with hybridization model is countered by overwhelming genetic data that point to Africa as the origin of modern humans. Studies show that 97.4% of human genetic makeup is from ancestral modern humans from Africa, with the rest coming Neanderthals and Denisovans. If there had been significant contributions from Homo erectus, they would show up in the genetic data. Many researchers say that there are ways to explain the existing Asian fossils without resorting to continuity with hybridization. The Asian hominins could represent an exodus of early modern humans from Africa between 120,000 and 80,000 years ago. Instead of remaining in the Levant in the Middle East, as was thought previously, these people could have expanded into East Asia earlier. Other evidence backs up this hypothesis. Excavations at a cave in East Asia have yielded 47 fossil teeth, so modern looking that they could have come from the mouths of people today. But the fossils are at least 80,000 years old, and perhaps 120,000. Those early migrants may have interbred with archaic populations along the way or in Asia, which could explain these people's primitive traits. Another possibility is that some of the Asian fossils represent the mysterious Denisovans, a species identified from Siberian fossils that are more than 40,000 years old. Paleontologists don't know what the Denisovans looked like, but studies of DNA, recovered from their teeth and bones, indicate that this ancient population contributed to the genomes of modern humans, especially Australian Aborigines, Papua New Guineans, and Polynesians, suggesting that Denisovans might have roamed East Asia. A third idea is even more controversial. The idea emerged when scientists compared more than 5,000 fossil teeth from around the world, and found that Eurasian specimens are more similar to each other than to African specimens. That work and more recent interpretations of fossil skulls, suggest that Eurasian hominins evolved separately from African hominins for a very long period of time. The researchers proposed that the first Homo erectus that left Africa 1.8 million years ago were the eventual source of modern humans. Their descendants mostly settled in the Middle East, where the climate was favorable, and then produced waves of transitional hominins that spread elsewhere. 
one mysterious group went to Sunderland, the lost continent in the region of Indonesia, another gave rise to Eurasian Neanderthals and Denisovans, and a third ventured back into Africa, and evolved into Homo sapiens. In this model, modern humans evolved in Africa, but our immediate ancestor originated in the Middle East. However, not everybody is convinced, because fossil interpretations are notoriously problematic. The DNA from Eurasian fossils, dating to the start of the human race, could help to reveal which story is correct. Despite the different interpretations of the fossil record, everybody agrees that the evolutionary tale in Asia is much more interesting than people appreciated in the past. But the details remain fuzzy, because so few researchers have excavated in Asia. When they have, the results have been startling. For example, a dig on Flores Island, in Indonesia, turned up a diminutive hominin, which researchers named Homo floresiensis and dubbed the Hobbit. With its odd assortment of features, the creature still provokes debate about whether it is a dwarfed form of Homo erectus, or some more primitive lineage that made it all the way from Africa to Southeast Asia, and lived until as recently as 60,000 years ago. Indeed, Asia has a lot more to offer in terms of unraveling the human story. Thank you.